Hello and welcome back to Vegas Aces live stream. My name is Heather Ferris and I'll be your host for today. On today's live stream, we are going to be discussing what to know for the first time walking into a casino. So if you guys have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please put them in the chat and we will go over them at the end of the video about. It's good to see everyone here. Thank you again so much for joining. Now, before we get started, I just want to remind you to subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification bell so that we are always notified of our latest videos and live streams. If you are brand new to this channel and this is your first time here, my name is Heather Ferris and I am the founder of Vegas Aces. I'm also an adjunct professor, content creator, consultant, and I've been involved with the casino industry for over 15 years. So I created Vegas Aces in order to help people learn how to play and deal casino table games. And as a way to give back to our community, we offer a free dealing trade school where we help place dealers at no cost. Okay, you guys, on with the show. Now, being a casino dealer, and before we get started, Domestic, thank you very, very much for the super chat. Really do appreciate it. Pip appreciates it too. We will give Pip her treats. Pip, Pip. I think she might be outside. Now, being a casino dealer, I saw a lot of newbie players, there she is, walk up to my table. Come here, Pip. Oh, there we go. We got Pip here <laughs> and she sees her treats. Thank you again, Domestic, very much for the super chat. Really do appreciate it. And I know Pip appreciates it too. So again, uh, when I was a casino dealer, I would see a lot of newbies walk up to the table and they would have absolutely no clue what they were doing. And you could tell that they had no clue what they were doing because they would walk up to my table and they'd be like, oh, is this a blackjack table? And I'd be like, no, I'm dealing three card poker. I don't know how you got blackjack off of this. <laughs> so you could tell that some of them didn't know what was going on. You could tell some of them were intimidated. Pippi. And also too, because of this, uh, they lost the courage to play. Well, we don't really want that. We don't want people to lose the courage to play because they're intimidated. Um, also too, another reason why people don't play is because they think that they're gonna mess up, they're gonna make mistakes. And <laughs> uh, they, they don't wanna do that in front of people. Oh, wow. Thank you, Domestic. Very, very much appreciate the super chat. Thank you so much. Mirror uniform, I will definitely do that. <laughs> Thank you very, very much again, uh, Domestic, so much for the super chat. I'm sort of flabbergasted at the moment. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Um, real quick, while we are talking about that, I won't be able to do the Mirror Universe outfit next week because I am going to be taking next week off. Um, I am doing, <laughs> thank you domestic, <laughs> you are really awesome, really do appreciate all of those super chats. Thank you so much Dom. Um, I'm going to be taking next week off for my birthday. So on Monday, November 16th, I am, uh, it'll be my birthday, I'm going to be turning 39 years old. I am so old. Um, so I am taking the week off and there will be no live streams on Monday the 16th or Thursday. I think it's the 19th. But we will have a live stream on the 23rd and it will be uh, the top five tips for visiting Las Vegas. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Um, I will definitely wear the Mirror Universe outfit. Dom, email me. We'll figure out a day when I will wear the Mirror Universe outfit. But I want to do it on a day where you could see, like, my entire... Oh my god, drinks! Okay. Here we go. Doing drinks. And I just lost my screen. Awesome. I don't know how, don't know why but I hope it comes back so I could see you guys in your chats. 
And it, wow, thank you guys so much for all of the super chats. Yay, my screen came back on, fantastic. Two drinks coming your way, let us continue. Um, so it is common for people to feel intimidated. It's common for people to feel nervous and anxious when approaching a table for the first time. And these feelings are caused by feelings of the unknown. Oh my God, you guys are gonna make me so drunk at the end of this. I got three shots I have to take for three $10 super chats. Domestic Rocky, thank you very much for getting me wasted at the early part of my day so I won't be able to do anything else for the rest of the day. <laughs> um, thank you guys very, very much. So as I am taking these, because I will need a little time in between, uh, now, all of these feelings that we talk about, you know, anxiousness, uh, intimidation, all of these feelings are caused from the fear of the unknown. And what better way to battle the fear of the unknown than by learning, by understanding, by knowing what's going on around us. Now, the first thing to do when you are gonna go to the casino for the first time is to figure out what games you wanna play. You know, what do you want to sit down and actually spend your time playing? And learn those games. Like, actually take some time to learn those games. Now, you can learn those games by going to my website, vegas-aces.com, and um, going to our articles page where we have a how to play section for most of the core table games. Or another thing, if you go to the link in the description below, you could go to Wizard of Odds, uh, that website, and he has an electronic version, a web-based version of the game that you could play. No, that's mine. <laughs> that you could play yourself so that way you can actually sit down and get some time to familiarize yourself with the game, how the game is played, what to expect, what to know, and when you go up to a casino game, you'll know what to expect. You'll know how to play. You'll know what's expected of you. So it'll make it a lot easier for you to play that game in the casino. Um, again, check it out. Link in the description below. He has pretty much every game you could possibly imagine. Wizard of Odds. Um, and play the game that you want to sit down and play in your casino and get a feel for it and learn how to play it. Okay, first shot coming up. Here we go. Eek. Uh, goodbye to a sober day. Okay. Ah. Ugh. Okay, one down, two to go. Oh, goodness. Me, oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> so again, check out the link in the description below. Now, after walking into the casino for the first time, you've, you know, sat at your desk, you've played at home, you've played the online casinos, you've read through our online articles, you know how to play the games. Once you learn that, and once you go in to play at the uh, casino for the very first time, if you approach your game and you, f you know, still feel a little bit hesitant, just know the casinos do allow you to stand there and watch the game being played. So that way you can get a feel for it before you jump in. Now, just keep in mind in the age of COVID, you may be asked to stand six feet away from players on the table. Uh, this will also, again, allow you to get a feel for the game before judging, uh, jumping in. Now, if there are players already at the blackjack table, so you decide that you want to sit down at a blackjack table, which by the way, this is what a blackjack table looks like. If you walk up to a table and it does not look like this, please don't ask, oh, is that a blackjack table? No, it's three card poker. Anyway, go up to a blackjack table and the polite thing to do before sitting down and jumping in before playing is to ask the players on the table if they mind if you jump in. Um, and the reason why is because some people feel that a new player jumping in changes the cards and it changes the luck of the table. So if you want to be courteous, if you want to show, you know, 
being polite, I can't think of the word for it. If you want to be polite to the other people on the table, ask them, hey, is it cool if I jump in or do you want me to wait until the end of the hand or the end of the shoe? So that's something to keep in mind. That will also keep people from jumping down your throat if uh, you do end up jumping in and the cards take a turn for the worst. Uh, so hopefully that protects you. Again, you guys, thank you so, so much for all the super chats. I am just like flabbergasted looking at all this and I just really do appreciate it. Thank you so, so much. Just wow, thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so let us continue. Let's see. I'm gonna check and make sure, oh, I guess I, I'll take another drink real quick before I uh, bump into this and it spills everywhere, which actually happened uh, yesterday. Uh, I made a smoothie for myself. Here's a fun little story. This happened like literally yesterday. I don't know why I'm closing it. I need to do one more. Um, I was making a smoothie and I thought the lid was on, but the lid wasn't on. And I go to pour the smoothie and the entire smoothie just it, I was pouring it over the oven. I wish I hadn't done that because it was all in the oven, under the oven, over the under, of, oven, in like little spaces that I never thought existed. So I don't want the same thing to happen with the, the, the alcohol. That would not be good. Okay, cheers. Two down, one to go. Okay. One more to go. Let me make sure that I do not have any uh, comments or questions right here before we continue. Um, I can't exactly scroll back up because I don't have a uh, wireless mouse with me. Thank you guys very much for the birthday wishes. Really do appreciate that. <laughs> okay, well, I'm glad nobody's asking any questions, so let's continue. And then uh, if you do have any questions, put it in the chat and I will answer it either as we go along or at the end of the video. Um, if you like this video and you want to help support Vegas Aces, please remember to tip your dealer. And now you can with Super Chat, which is what Domestic and Rocky did. Thank you guys so, so, so much. Um, Super Chat is a way YouTube allows you to show your appreciation by tipping me any amount you want. Go ahead, give it a try, or show your support by becoming a member of our Patreon page. We have several different levels and rewards for you to choose from. Any membership level counts, even a dollar, so please go join today. And you guys, thank you again so much for all those Super Chats. That just totally blew my mind. I really appreciate that. Okay, so let us continue. Now, when you sit on the table, you, you've picked the table you wanna pick, you sat there, you watched it for a while, you know you wanna play, you, you understand the game. Okay, so now you're actually sitting down on the game. Now, when you are placing your items on the table right here, um, just so you know, there are certain things that are allowed and forbidden on the table. So when you go on the table, you are allowed to place items in this area right here. This area right here is called the apron and the apron is basically for players chips, uh, drinks or cigarettes if it's a smoking hotel and casino. So they could, if they could basically smoke it, drink it or gamble it, then that's what would be in the apron area right here. Now, try to avoid placing your cell phone on there. Uh, food, no food. Please don't place your small children on there. Uh, don't try to change diapers or anything. This is not a diaper changing area, please. Um, anything else, basically, if you can't drink it, smoke it, or gamble it, anything else is forbidden on the table, especially cell phones. Do not place cell phones or small children on the table. Basically, um, again, only money, cash is fine, chips are good, uh, alcohol, speaking of which, take the third shot right now, and smoking, depending on the casino, because I know some casinos are non-smoking. And also too, um, 
yeah, non-smoking. Here we go, second shot. It's already starting to affect me. Third shot. Yeah, see, it's already starting to affect me. Eek. <laughs> no dogs in the area either. Pip would not be allowed on the table. This would also be a no-go. Although, uh, depending on the celebrity and how much money they spend, maybe. I've seen dogs in the casino before with uh, celebrities and everything, so it depends on how much you spend. Third drink, you guys. Thank you again very, very much for that. Cheers. And I'm so gonna be wasted. Ugh. Okay. Whew. Thank you again very much for that. Really do appreciate it. Okay. So after we set our stuff on the table, the next step that you're going to do is you're actually going to uh, change cash for checks. So take out the amount amount of money that you wish to play and when the dealer is ready uh, place the money on the table and they'll take the money and they'll exchange it for chips and these chips are what you use uh, when you're playing on the game now there's a couple things to think about when you are actually handing the person money put the money on the table like so don't actually hand it to them. If you hand it to them like this, this is a no-go. You do not want to hand off the money to the dealer. Always put the money on the table and then the dealer will grab the money from the table, bring it over, and then give you chips for that money. Like so. Now, another thing you don't want to do is when you put the money on the table, put it in between the spaces where the circles are or anywhere in this area right here you do not want to put your money actually in a circle and if you put the money in the circle let's say if you buy in for a hundred dollars and you put that money in the circle the dealer might think that you're playing that they might think that that's like a one shot you know one and done one bet and you're gonna spend all that money in one bet and that's it. If you win, awesome, but if you don't win, you just spent all of your gambling money in one bet. So don't put it in these circles because the dealer will think that that's a bet and then they might actually start dealing and once the cards are out, you can't change your bet at all. So you're sort of stuck with that. So again, put the money on the table and make sure it's in between these betting circles or somewhere in this area right here and the dealer will give you chips to play with. Okay, so after you have these chips, so now you changed in some money, now you have these chips, go ahead and make your bet and you're gonna place these chips in the betting circle because like what we established before, betting circle, so when you're putting money in the betting circle, remember to take a look at the minimum maximum sign, which is usually somewhere on the table. And that minimum maximum sign is gonna be what tells you how much to bet in this betting area. So if you have a $5 minimum table, you must bet a minimum of $5. If you have a $10 minimum table, you must bet $10 and so on. Uh, same thing with maximum. If you have a maximum table of, let's say, $1,000, you can't go up to it and bet $2,000. So it's good to know what the minimum maximum is when you sit down at the table, and you can usually find that out on the minimum maximum sign located somewhere on the table. <laughs> and you guys in the chat are awesome and having a lot of fun converse, uh, a lot of fun conversations. You okay, baby? Okay. So as we continue, 
when you are starting off, it's also good to know uh, how much money each chip is. So I've had new players bet $25 chip, $100 chip, thinking they were betting a $5 chip and they just didn't look at it. They didn't process, it didn't register in their brain. So just keep in mind that red chips like so are usually $5 green chips like so are $25 and black chips are typically $100. And these are the three most common colors you're gonna see in a casino, $5, $25, and $10. There is no $10 chip, so don't ask your dealer for a $10 chip. In a casino, there's no such thing as a $10 chip, at least not in a casino I've ever been to. Um, so no $10 chips, no $20 chips, you have a $5 chip, a $25 chip, and a $100 chip. So when you're making your bet in this area, let's say you wanna bet all three uh, chips, red, green, and black, they have to be in a certain order. You can't do, let's say 25 on the bottom, $5 in the middle, and $100 on top. They won't allow that. Whenever you're setting up chips, you always have to do the highest denomination on the bottom, second highest denomination after that, and the least lowest denomination on the very top. So if you don't play that correctly, no worries. The dealer will just go in and make those changes for you and set up your bet the way it should be. Um, if you are a player who has a superstition where the, the dealer cannot touch your money, please make sure your money is set up correctly so the dealer doesn't have to touch your money. I got yelled at, the, I got yelled at by a player one time who was superstitious because he didn't want the dealer to touch his money before the cards came out because he, he thought he would lose. However, whenever he played, he would always set up his money wrong. So I had to go in there and I had to fix it and then he would get mad because I touched it. And I'd be like, sir, set up your money correctly and we won't have this problem. Okay. I want to play a hand or two. <laughs> um, no, we are not gonna play a hand or two today. We are just doing uh, this. We're not gonna do a tournament. However, if you do wanna do a tournament live stream, let me know and we will set up a tournament live stream for uh, one of my future live streams. Okay. So after we get all this betting stuff out of the way, now you understand all that, you've made your bet, you have money on the table, you know what you're doing. Now it's time for the very, very first card to come out. Now, once this first card has come out, the player is not allowed to touch or alter their bet. So you can't make any changes to your bet once the first card has come out. If you're playing blackjack and the cards are on the table face up, then know that you are not allowed to touch the cards. So if we have cards that look like this on the table, you are betting on a blackjack table where you are not allowed to touch the cards. You have to make a hand signal to tell the dealer what you want to do. You can't actually tell the dealer, like speak it, vocalize it, because the cameras, the eye in the sky, they can't hear anything. They cannot hear any sound at all. So the dealer needs you to communicate with a hand signal. We have an 18 against a 10. I guess we are gonna do a couple hands. Uh, we're gonna stay. So we're gonna wave it off and that means stay. When you're waving, don't wave it over your bed or over the cards. Wave it on the side or behind. If you wave it over your cards or over your bet, the dealer might tr think that you're trying to cheat. Um, this would be, let's say, if you want it, this is good for both of them. So let's say you have a $10 bet and I have a four up card. Then I'm just gonna use this as an example. We're not gonna go by basic strategy. If you wanna split, which means you wanna play two separate hands, then you're gonna make a V shape with your hand and this shows the cameras that you're splitting and you have to put an equal amount out. So now you're playing two hands. So that means you are splitting and you're gonna play two separate hands. And you can hit 
stay, double, whatever you want to do, but you're playing two separate hands. Now, if you want to double down, same thing, you put the money out there and it's the same amount, but this time you hold out one finger. And this is showing the dealer that you want one card. So again, stay, stay, we'll hit on this. When you're hitting, you're scratching the table towards yourself like so, and then you'll get another card. Now, if you are on a blackjack table where the dealer is throwing cards at you, ah, <laughs> like so, what that is, is that's a pitch game. That's a pitch blackjack. And a pitch blackjack game is a game where you do use your hands. So the dealer will pitch two cards to you. You pick up the cards like so, take a look at it. And if you want to stay, you put your cards underneath the chips and you leave it. Once you put the cards under the chips, you are not allowed to look at your cards anymore. You are not allowed to, oh yeah, what was it? Oh yeah. Oh wait, I forgot. Oh yeah. You can't do that. So you put the cards under your chips and you leave them and you're done. That means you're staying and you do not want any more cards. If you look at your cards and you want to hit, then you scratch the cards towards yourself like so and the dealer will give you another card. So that's hitting. If you want to double down or split, you're going to show your cards like so and you are going to put another bet that equals your original bet right next to it and you're going to again show the hand signal so one for a double two for a split one for a double two for a split now another thing you could do is if you have your cards like so if you have a blackjack so if your first two cards your original cards are blackjack you could show the dealer and the dealer will pay you automatically. Okay, I have to say this. If you have 21, let's say, okay, I have 12, I hit that, I get a nine for 21. Let's give myself a nine real quick. Let's see, where's a nine? Where's a nine when you need a nine? There it is. Okay, so I hit and I get a nine and I have 21. Please, 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 please do not flip over your cards and say, Blackjack, I won, pay me right away. Uh-uh, it does not work like that. Please do not do that. That is not a blackjack. That's a 21, good job, awesome, great, good for you. Put your cards under your bet and you are good. You are staying. This is not a Blackjack, celebrate, woo! Please don't do that. I have seen that way too many times. It's like, no, just no. <laughs> just know <laughs> don't do that <laughs> so that's something to keep in mind now let me see real quick what you guys are saying in the chat to see if you have any questions I don't want to miss anything before they scroll off the screen um, if I don't see anything then we will continue and I will answer questions at the end of the video Let's see yes I I'm feeling it totally loaded and totally feeling it and burping. Woohoo! Oh my god. I'm gonna be hiccuping. Watch. I bet you anything I'm gonna start hiccuping. Oh, you have $10 chips at Foxwood. Okay. I stand corrected. There is a $10 chip out there. Totally stand corrected. So $10 at Foxwood. Oh, and Bellagio has a $10 chip in the poker room. Okay, so I am totally wrong on that. $10 chips do exist. I just never dealt with them as a dealer. Let's see. Yeah, white chips are usually dollar chips. Sometimes blue chips are the 250 chips. Okay, so we got two questions. We'll answer them real quick. 
Greg says, I've seen instances of dealers showing the cameras what the hand signal was. What is your take on that? Um, typically what the dealer is supposed to do is if the player is not giving a, a good hand signal, they have to show them what to do. So if the player's just like, eh, sort of like that. Well, is that a hit? Is that a stay? Like, what are you doing? So the dealer might be like, are you hitting? Are you staying? Like, give me a clear hand signal. Tell me what you're doing. And if the player's like, okay, I'm hitting. I'm like, okay, is this a hit? Okay, it looks like a hit. Now I'll continue. Um, sometimes if players are not giving good signals, sometimes you just have those troubled players. Oh, here, baby, let me get you off. Oh, Don't. Oh, she's getting old. Um, sometimes you have the players who are just gonna give you trouble and they're not gonna give you a hand signal. In that case, when that happens, what you want to do is you want to keep the hands per hour up. So if you have a player who's staying over here and he is slow and he is not giving a hand signal and he is not, come on, like you're staying here waiting every single time, then what you're going to do is um, you're going to try to speed the game up. You don't want your hands per hour to go down because this guy can't give a good hand signal. So if you've gone to the point where no matter what you do, no matter what you say, this guy isn't giving a good hand signal, then yes, you might give the hand signal to the camera so they could see what's going on, just so you could get the game going and move it along because you don't want to hold up the game for one player because they can't figure out how to give a hand signal. So uh, I've seen that happen. I've done that a couple times. No, it's not good to do, and no, you don't want to get into the habit of it, but sometimes you're forced, in dis you're forced into difficult situations, and you have to think, okay, what's more important, this guy giving a clear hand signal, or my hands per hour going down, and we really need to keep the hands per hour up. Um, you have to make those decisions. And the floor supervisor will be behind you and they'll be helping you and they'll see what's going on and they'll be like, yeah, I totally understand. Don't worry, I got your back. So if your floor supervisor knows what's going on, he knows what you're doing and you're just trying to keep your hands per hour up, that's not like a different scenario. Okay, the other, oh, thank you. Thank you very much for the super chat, Dom. I will totally give Pip those treats. She just went outside, so as soon as she comes back in, we will bring her back on the table and give her these treats. Thank you so, so much, Dom, for the super chats. You are so awesome. Really do appreciate it. Okay, and our next question, real quick. Do you put the cards underneath between the dealer and the chips or between yourself and the chips? So it would be between uh, yourself and the chips. Uh, my perspective is a little different since I'm behind the table, since I'm the dealer. So it looks like it's more between like the dealer and the chips. But if you are a player, let's see. There you go. When you put the cards in, it'll look more like that. And your chips are going to be right there. You're not going to have food on the table. And your cards are going to be more between you and the player and not between the dealer and the chips. Okay. So again, if you guys have any questions, please put it in the chat and I will answer them uh, either as soon as I can or at the end of the video. Let's get back to this. <laughs> um, yes, we are doing a Wizard of Odds live stream today and Ask Mike Anything. So that will be at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Please join us. Uh, I hope to see you there. That would be really awesome. Again, the odds must be crazy. We are doing an AMA, Ask Mike Anything, with Michael Shackelford at, today at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So we really hope to see you there. Now, as you're playing this game, if you don't really know what to do, if you're sitting here, let's see, where is it? There we go. If you're sitting here and you don't know what to do, you don't know, should I hit that? Should I stay? Should I double? 
Or if one of the players is giving you a hard time telling you you should play basic strategy or you should play by the book, no worries, we got you covered. You can either go to vegas-aces.com and print out our basic strategy guide, which you can get for free, or you could go to any gift shop in any casino and for just a couple dollars, they'll give you this plastic card that has the basic strategy on it. You could play the basic strategy on the table. It's perfectly okay. The dealer is not gonna get mad at you. You could take it out and look at it and like figure it out and then hit, stay, whatever you want. And you can keep this on the table with you at all times. So the uh, casino is perfectly cool with you having a basic strategy card and play, playing basic strategy. That'll help a lot too. Oh yeah, you can also buy a basic strategy guide, one of these little plastic ones if you don't wanna print it out. Uh, by clicking the link in the description below, we put a link up on, to Amazon where you could buy one of these for just a couple dollars. And yes, the Wizard of Odds thing is on YouTube. Uh, his channel is The Odds Must Be Crazy. So today, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Odds Must Be Crazy on YouTube. Yeah, Greg, you are absolutely correct. As the dealer, when giving advice to the players, if players are like, should I hit this? Should I stay double, whatever? That's another thing. Uh, players, you can ask the dealer what you can do. The players can be like, hey, what does the book say? Or what should I do? Or how should I play that? And as the dealer, the dealer should always quote the book. So dealers should have the book memorized. They should have the basic strategy completely memorized. And when the dealer, or I mean, when the player asks you, hey, what should I do? You always say, the book says, whatever it is so you would stay on a 12 against a ten, uh, six or whatever you know or you would hit a 16 against the dealer's 10 up guard like you would tell them what the book says so very very good point greg thank you very much for bringing uh that up now before we get uh continue if you like this video and you want to help support Vegas Aces, then one of the ways you could do so is by going to vegas-aces.com and clicking on one of our affiliate banners. When you sign up for an account through one of our affiliate links from our website, we get a small commission. If you ever have any problems or disputes, contact me, email me, heather at vegas-aces.com and we will help you through it. Okay, so when you guys are done playing you've you've gone through you've sat down you've put your first bet down we've talked about you know playing the game and practicing at home and you know what to do when you're actually on the table now what do you do when you're done you finish playing you're good you want to leave what do you do well when you finish playing uh and you need to leave the table please don't walk off with all of your chips in hand. Please, please don't do that. <laughs> um, instead, give your chips to the dealer, like so, and ask for a color up. You know, color up, or can you color me up? And the deal dealer will be like, sure. And they'll take in your chips and they will show the cameras how much money you have. So we got a hundred, got 500, one chip too many on both of those. So we got $600. So the dealer will color you up and give you a uh, higher denomination chips for your smaller chips. So instead of having to carry uh, 40 chips in your pocket, you only have to carry two chips in your pocket and it's exactly the same amount. So the 500 and the 100. Oh yeah. <laughs> and if you are the dealer and you're coloring up anything past, um, it depends on the casino. If it's a break in the casino, it's usually a hundred dollars. If you're coloring up anything over a hundred, you have to call it in. Uh, color up a hundred 
if you are coloring up anything over two or three hundred at some other casinos then you would let them know it's different at every casino what the amount is but yeah so as the player don't leave the table with all of your chips color up your chips for a uh, fewer but larger denomination chips it's much better to walk around with two chips instead of 40 chips 40 chips is not that much fun um <laughs> it would not be fun pushing a wheelbarrow to the cage that would not be cool again when you are done remember to go to the cage to cash out exchange your chips for money before you leave you, it would not be cool if you went home with the chips because you can't exactly go to the grocery store and give them the chips for food. You can't do anything with this. They are only valuable in that casino. They're not valuable anywhere else. So make sure you go to the cage, give them all of the chips that you have. They will take those chips and exchange it for cash. So you actually can go to the grocery store and buy food. <laughs> um, again, don't forget to go to the cage before you leave. Now, if you guys have any comments, questions, or suggestions, put them in the chat. Speak now or forever hold your peace. We will be answering them here shortly. Just a quick reminder, Vegas Aces is supported by viewers like you. Donations make it possible for us to bring you all of these videos for free. If you think that this video was worth more than zero dollars, please donate the amount you feel it's worth by clicking the link in the description below. Uh, we updated the website. We have a new, what do we do? We have a new article on the website, uh, Lucky Eight Told Them. Check it out, it's a brand new game, Lucky Eight Told Them. So, new article. We will also be updating the website with more stuff here pretty soon. Looking forward to that. Just a quick reminder, our live streams next week are going to be, uh, well, I'm taking a vacation. So, no live streams next week. Uh, Monday the 16th is my birthday so I'm taking the week off for my birthday so no live streams on Monday the 16th or Thursday the 19th our next live stream will be on Monday the 23rd at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time where we are going to be talking about the top five tips when traveling when traveling for Las Vegas uh, we have a special guest, uh, Michael Traeger from Travel Zork, so I'm looking forward to doing that interview with him. Okay, so let's see what you guys are saying in the chat real quick. Let's answer some more of your questions, and then we'll, we, we, eh, and then we'll get going for today. Uh, remember, you could join me uh, later at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time at the YouTube channel, The Odds Must Be Crazy, where we are going to be doing an AMA, Ask Mike Anything, with Michael Shackelford with The Wizard of Odds. So please join us. Greg, thank you very much for the super chat. Do appreciate that. I see story time up there. Happy early birthday. Thank you very much. Uh, let me know what kind of story you want to hear. Do you want to hear about dogs in the casino? Do you want to hear about people winning, people losing? Uh, I have so many stories. Let me know. Let me see if I can think of... The only birthday story I have is the one where the celebrity made her fool of herself. And it was her sister's birthday, not her birthday. But let me know what kind of story you want to hear, Greg, and I will tell you that story. Give me a, a general topic. Okay, so let's see what else you guys are saying real fast. So can you play on more than one spot on the table? Because we can't where I play. So typically in Las Vegas, yes, you can play more than one spot, but it really just depends on the casino. Uh, some casinos, they will only let you play one spot and that's it. Some casinos will let you play two for the minimum, so $10 minimum, $10 minimum. Other casinos will let you play as many as you want, but the more spots you play, you have to double the minimum. So if you have a $5 minimum, then you play $5 here and you have to double it for the second spot, so that's $10. And then double it for this third spot, so that's $20. And then double it for the fourth spot, that's $40. And that's the only way you could play. So it really just depends on the casino and what their rules are at that time. So 
So day, uh, J Dog says, mind if I make a suggestion? When placing the bet on blackjack, don't put one check flat on the table and stand one on the edge on top of the flat. Oh, okay, that's a good point. So J Dog has a good point. Um, and this goes for players and dealers both alike. When you are on a blackjack table, the cameras don't like it when you heal a bet. So this is what healing a bet is. Healing a bet is you have the flat bet on the bottom and more chips on the top that are healed to the side. So don't heal the bet. When you put the bet up, make sure it's in one uh, stack like so and not healed. Very good point, j Dog. Unless you're in a house that accepts foreign ships, right? Yes, so if you have a five, well, let's say a hundred dollar chip from Planet Hollywood, and you're not at Planet Hollywood, you're at the Bellagio or something, um, you can give your Planet Hollywood chip to the Bellagio table, and they will exchange it for a Bellagio chip. Uh, but it really just depends on the casino. It depends on the floor supervisor. Uh, the floor supervisor has to be called. He has to look at the chip, verify it, look through a big old list, see if it's approved. And if it's approved, then you can exchange one foreign check for another. So I could exchange my Planet Hollywood $100 for Bellagio $100, and that's perfectly okay. So absolutely correct about that. Oh, and thank you for the birthday wishes. Really do appreciate that. Thank you, Chris, so much. Thank you, Tsukuni. Really, really do appreciate the uh, birthday wishes. And all of the super chats. You guys are just so awesome today. Really do appreciate that. Thank you. We want to hear about winners and losers. What about someone losing? That tends to be the greatest. <gasps> oh my God, that's funny. Okay, uh, losing bets. Okay, so I got a couple losing ones for you. I'm trying to think of some other ones. Because I tend to tell the same stories. So I was on roulette one day and you always hear these stories, okay, where someone goes into a casino and they lose their mortgage, you know. Well, it was something similar to that. Um, I had this guy on my table and that reminds me of another losing story I'll tell after this. Um, I had this guy on my table where he, I don't know what he was thinking. Um, he was supposed to pay like $2,500 for the mortgage for the month or something. And I guess he didn't have any money for any other bills or food or anything. He could just do the mortgage or nothing else. So what he was thinking, I don't know, but he went up to a roulette table and put his entire mortgage, $2,500 for the month, on red. And I spun the ball and black hit and I took the money. And he started crying. <laughs> and I'm like, what? He's like, that was my mortgage for the month. I'm like, why the hell were you playing it? Well, because I couldn't afford any of my other bills. I'm like, now you can't afford any of your other bills and you can't afford your mortgage for the month. Like, what were you thinking? Um, another one was uh, this guy was on the table and he was so sure that this one number was going to hit. Same thing, roulette. So he put a hundred on the number, spun, didn't hit, put a hundred on the number, spun, didn't hit. Every single time, it just would not freaking hit at all. <laughs> and I felt so bad because after about, what was it, like an hour or two, maybe three, I don't know, it was two or three hours, let's say somewhere around there, uh, of doing this and losing a ton of money, um, this random guy comes up and puts $25 on one number and I hit him on the very first spin. <laughs> and the look this guy gave him was pure like death and hatred. He was so funny. I felt so bad for the guy. Um, and I was trying really hard not to laugh, but yeah. 
Oh, one more losing story, and then that'll be it. Uh, this was on Let It Ride, and I've told this story before. This lady had uh, the highest amount you can you can win, and I forget what it was, like straight flush, royal flush, something like that. And she was going to win $40,000. She was so freaking excited that she takes her cards, takes my cards, and jumps up off the table and runs to the craps table to go tell her husband, oh my God, I won 40,000. See, Royal Flush, isn't this so awesome? And the husband's like, oh my God, honey, you just disqualified yourself. You're not winning 40,000 because you took the cards off the table. And you know, me, I was yelling, don't go off the table. All the players were yelling, don't take the cards off the table. And as soon as she took the cards off the table, she was disqualified and the casino wouldn't pay her the 40,000. And the, the, the husband was not happy. It was like her first time in the casino and like the first game she ever played and she won the 40,000 and she just, don't take your cards off the table. That's another good advice for newbie players. If you're gonna take, um, if you're gonna do anything, do not take the cards off the table. So if you are handling your cards, if you're holding your cards, do not take the cards, where are they? Off the table. As soon as you take the cards off the table, no longer counts, it is disqualified. Hippie, hip. Okay, so let's see what else you guys are saying really fast. I used to be good at blackjack, we win a lot of tickets on our carnival night, cool. <laughs> okay you guys that looks like it's it that's all of the comments i see um let's get pip up here to enjoy these treats real fast before we end this live stream you guys have been totally fantastic thank you so so much for joining me pip pippy pip she might be outside i'm pretty sure she's outside because i don't see her anywhere but I will give her the treats here in just a moment. Thank you again so, so much for all of your super chats. It's, thank you, Dom, especially for all of them. Thank you very, very much. Really, really do appreciate it. Um, you guys are the best. And I really look forward to seeing you guys every day on these live streams. And thank you for making the year fun. And I look forward to another year with you guys. So, okay, that does it for today. Join me on our next live stream on Monday the 23rd at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, until then, this is Heather Ferris with Vegas Aces reminding you that education can change the world. Have a great day, you guys. Take care. Bye.